Hello Gear users, Alexi, your Gear Guide, and today we're gonna check out Unreal Studio Datasmith. It's a plugin that exports 3ds Max files into Unreal Engine 4. And uh, as you can see here on their website, you can join the beta testing program. And we can see that it's also available for Rhino and SolidWorks and SketchUp. And you can check out different presentations and what people do in uh, virtual reality world okay so after you download it and install it to your unreal engine let's launch i'm using 419 even though 420 came out but um i had some crashes with it some some error on the exports so i um, i'd rather went back to the 419 and uh, today i'm going to demonstrate this uh plugin in use so um, the first thing is when you launch that engine you go to the new project and you will find that unreal studio tab here and uh, before exporting if we come back to the library here we need to install unreal datasmith and we need to get the 3ds max plugin so if you click get you'll be able to get to this download page where you can download for 419 and 420 so I click on download this one, save, ran it, and after running it, I got an option here in 3ds Max to export my scene. This is my loft scene. I kind of optimized it a little bit, give it a little better names. So I'm going to click export the entire scene. That scene made in V-Ray and got V-Ray material, so nothing was converted. And I'm going to go to documents, Unreal Project and call it 3ds max loft prep one and select here data smith that's the plugin that was installed click export okay notice here at the bottom all my names are ms it's for mesh and um, all the textures i named t um, underscore so it's very easy to track those inside unreal engine so it's very important to have good names for your materials and for your meshes all right so the export was done we get a message here with different errors that we need to fix so some partially supported some textures that needs to be uh, normal input gamma here i think it's not a big problem fall off maps work only yeah. so we need to fix the fall off maps but in general i think this can work in unreal so let's go back to our unreal engine new project unreal studio and we're going to use this blank so let's give a name to our project. Let's call it Loft uh, Prep 1 and create project. We don't need the 3ds Max anymore, so we can close it. All right, so we launched our Unreal here. And inside Unreal, we can see we have this button, import data smith. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take sky and move it to the side. I'm gonna leave the reflection and the camera actor in the middle. Click import data smith, go to our Unreal Engine. And let's load this Unreal data, data smith, call it loft in the new folder click OK and we're gonna import everything geometry materials lighting and cameras so apparently data smith have a good way to work and make everything accessible and convert all the bumps into normals and get the V-Ray cameras and the V-Ray material and convert everything so I don't need to convert it into standard materials like I showed you in the manual mode 
with this export you can see everything all the textures and all that stuff being already imported however we do need to adjust our uh, material parameters because all the materials will come flat they're, not, they're only gonna have some bumps but they're not gonna have any specular values or or, or roughness so all of the all of that stuff needs to be adjusted also uh, v-ray lights they come in um, untweaked so all of those things we need to really redo or remove or retweak I'm going to delete all the lights that will come in with the scene and I'm going to use the default lights of Unreal Engine in order to bake lighting all right so this scene was imported we see a lot of crazy lights going on here so let's let's remove those guys because we don't really need them and those are my default lights and my sky dome I'm gonna move it to the side I think there is one sky dome that came in with that scene here yes it's right here so we need only one sky dome we can delete this one we don't really need it and let's get rid of those crazy lights here all right so the shaders compiling slowly and um, soon enough we're gonna get everything ready to go as you can see here i've added uh like an elevator inside i'm gonna build so i remove the window now those guys are sky portals that i used in v-ray if we using those we're gonna use them of course in unreal engine it's very important to have sky portals so just let's make sure these guys fitting our opening I'm gonna remove that floor also because I don't really need it so like in V-Ray every opening gotta have a sky portal okay in Unreal Engine you can see here it's called light mass portal I need to select this portal alt and drag and I need to squish it a little bit let's go with numbers all right so that matches let's match this guy too it's a little bit annoying in Unreal Engine those scales I have to drag my mouse <laughs> quite a bit all right so this one's cool okay and uh, that old sky portal used to be a window here I'm going to remove I'm gonna put an elevator here like uh, big lofts have okay so we can see that we have some basic lighting and some ambient inclusion going on here so I'm gonna go and remove that ambient inclusion that auto it's called uh, ambient inclusion yeah so I'm gonna click uncheck I'm gonna have a clear start and now we need to go and see how our lights light maps react so in order to do that we gotta go to lit and light map density so that's the quality when we're baking lighting we want to make sure our light maps are dense enough and here we need to do override so i'm going to do 1024 bring everything to green red is a little bit overkill but our pillows will have really nice detail so some objects like refrigerator we can reduce we don't need to have um, that high lighting map so lighting map is basically the detail that you get inside the the map okay and the kitchen let's also optimize that a little bit give it a little higher uh, 128 
56, 5, yeah, okay. And this doesn't have to be that high, so let's do override. 64 is pretty good. Okay, so our stuff is looking good. And um, we're going to increase those in case we're going to have a lot of uh, like jittery lighting on the sides after baking so we can increase our maps a little bit higher but we're gonna start from this and try to avoid 2k maps just stay 1000 or like 520 let's go back to lit all of those parameters by the way lit unlit wireframe you can check it out this is just the lighting you can see we didn't bake anything so it doesn't look that great but um, let's do that bake for now and in order to have a little bit better bake we're going to add a few things one thing is we're going to add volume of importance so we'll get a really nice detail in it and we gotta go to volumes light mass importance volume and that needs to cover the entire project everything within this volume is going to be it's going to have a good detail so that's why it's called volume of importance all the stuff that inside of it is important all right and we're also going to get some visual effects post-processing in order i like to um, zero up my camera so we're going to put our post-production volume also to cover the entire thing all right and now if we go to that the camera here exposure we're going to do minimum maximum one and one Okay, now another thing we need to do here, um, unbound for the processing, infinite extent, unbound, post-processing volume, so we gotta scroll, find it here, and that's the option, infinite extent of unbound. Alright, now let's go to our rendering settings, which is uh, the world settings. And here we're going to open the light mass and we're going to put the number of indirect lights to 10. This is more or less the uh, quality. And after that we can go and uh, uncheck compressed maps. It's not advisable for low computers because it's going to take a long time to render. However, if we don't compress our light maps, we get the real deal of ambient inclusion and all the quality, all those little details will pop out. So, untick that. And now we can go to our actor. If I click play, escape, I'll be able to stand in my scene here. And let's bake lighting with preview quality. All right, let's keep build. All right, and the lighting was built. So let's go and you see it's pretty dark inside, but we can play exposure. If we expose properly, we can see a little bit more detail. All right, so we can see in some corners here, we get a little bit of ambient inclusion. Let's go see in our lighting map. Lighting only. There, you can see that it's a little bit kind of jittery here, so we can increase that map a little bit higher. 
and we can also start doing the production so let's add a little bit more bounces to get a little better quality indirect lighting quality let's put here five and let's take this and increase a little bit more to get to get this guy a better shadows so let's go All right, and now let's go and change our settings to production and build our light again. Oh, and one more thing while we're building light, I'm going to open my swarm agent and here in many times this thing de developer let's put it on true and then we get developer settings and processors count 10 i'm using actually 12 let's change it to 12. and next time when we render we'll get two processors i don't know why it removes those two processors every time we're trying to build uh lighting or if this is like the default settings maybe not to overload or not to burn our processors but with this addition you will get a little bit extra uh, power to calculate your light mass all right and the lighting was built we can see a really nice gi here oh we got a light leak right here on top we gotta go and check out the material UVs on the channel. So it looks mapped pretty properly. All right, so we have to go back to Max and see if we need to unwrap it manually. But generally speaking, look at this GI, guys. This stuff is looking pretty awesome. Look at the pool. Let me get a, a little bit light in here. Wow, this stuff looks not shabby at all. You can see nice GI, nice fall off. It's a little bit overexposed. Let's change it to two and one. And I think the best also to disconnect the auto exposure so we can play with the intensity. Now we can see the real deal. Oh, this stuff looks great. And it took only 30 minutes to bake. All right, with the higher parameters, you probably can get much better results. And if we add some lighting and everything, it will be baked much better. But look at this ambient inclusion in the corners. This stuff is looking pretty nice all right so i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial more stuff can be found in unreal engine vr interiors workshop and i'll see you next time